When I first got started in this business, trying to figure out what I should offer a seller was one of the biggest challenges I was facing. So I know there has to be someone else out there going through the same thing. In this video, I wanna give you three different ways that you could try to narrow down your numbers a little bit to find out what you should offer the seller. The first method I wanna talk about is the 70% method. It's when you take the ARV of a property minus 30%, which will leave you with the 70%, minus repair costs, minus what you want to make as a wholesaler. That will give you what you should offer the seller. In all three different methods, I'm gonna use the same numbers. $150,000 as the ARV, $25,000 as the profit, and $20,000 as the repair cost. Let's jump straight into things. $150,000, as we said, we will go ahead and we will subtract 30%. We'll leave you with $105,000. You wanna go ahead and take off the $20,000 in repairs that we talked about. We'll leave you with $85,000. What do you want to make as a wholesaler? You wanna make 10,000, 20,000, 15,000? Let's just use the basic number as $10,000 profit, what you want to make. So we'll go ahead and subtract 10,000. Boom, 75,000 is what you can offer the seller comfortably where you can still make 10, the buyer can go ahead and put 20 into the property and they can still make $25,000 profit when everything is said and done, hopefully. We're gonna go ahead and just put it on the market for that. So, just to recap, the 70% method, ARV minus 30% leaves you with 70, minus repair costs, minus what you want to make. In this particular scenario, it leaves you with $75,000. Go ahead, bro. You can offer that seller $75,000. If they take it, you will make $10,000 and your buyer will be happy. Let's get it. Let's talk about method number two, the 50% method. I know a lot of people use this method. I used it myself when we were texting people from Zillow for sale by owners, offering them half of whatever they were asking for the property. Same numbers, let's run it, see what we come up with. $150,000. In this method, all you're going to do is offer them half of what either they're asking or what the value of the property is. We don't know what they're asking because this is a made up scenario. So we're just going to assume the value is 150, offer them half. So we divide by two, boom, 75,000. You can go in there, offer them 75,000 and feel comfortable that you could probably still sell it for more than that. Of course, depending on the property's condition, there's a lot of variables that you have to take into consideration. But for this little scenario, we're just gonna assume the property does need some type of work and 75,000 of what you can go in there and comfortably offer the seller and know that you can still possibly make some money. Now, compare this to the 70% method. Just because of the numbers, it happens to be around the same. That will not always be the case, but in this particular scenario, it is the case. 75, 75, that is your number. Let's see what we can do with the next method. This method I like to call the investor's method. I know a lot of investors who use a very, very similar method to come up with their numbers. We're gonna keep the same numbers, $150,000. First thing we do, is minus 6%. That 6% is what the investor is keeping in mind when I fix this property, put it on the market, what is a realtor gonna charge me? 6%, it's not always accurate, but it's a base number that we use. So 6%, $9,000, boom, puts you at $141,000. We said that there's $20,000 in repairs, so we minus 20,000, 121 is where we're at right now. We said the investor wants to make 25,000, right? Cool, minus $25,000, puts us at $96,000. We wanna make 10, right? That's what we said earlier, cool. Put 10,000 in there, puts you at $86,000. Now you may be looking at this number compared to the other two methods and you said, look bro, you $11,000 higher than you were before. Yes, I know. That's how much room this method puts in place for you to be able to be a little more 
creative if need be or give you a little more leeway to go ahead and do some renegotiating on either side. This puts you at 86,000. Now, using these numbers, I feel that if I can get this property at 86,000, a buyer should feel comfortable buying it and I will be able to make $10,000. Of course, that leaves room for negotiating on both sides. What I could do is come even lower. We know the other properties were going for $75,000 possibly. So we can come that low and know that we can go up to 86,000 and it will still fit our model. Something that will work for us. Something that investors, at least in my area, use to calculate their numbers to see if things make sense for them. And I know if I'm doing what the investors do, it's going to be hard for me to have the wrong number. I use this method. I subtract what I want to make. Now I have room for negotiating. And if I need to start even lower, which this method shows me I clearly could if I wanted to, then I could come in and make either more money or give my buyer a bigger spread or give the seller more money to where they feel like they have won as well because you want it to be a win-win for everyone, right? Of course you do. Using these three different methods to help you come up with a number that you feel comfortable with offering the seller. Now, as you continue to progress and you become more familiar with your market and the numbers and repair costs and what your particular buyers are looking for, you'll be able to narrow these numbers down to where boom, 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 it's a no brainer every time. This is the particular method I like to use, number three, because it helps me narrow down to an investor's mindset and it helps me get my numbers so tight that I know I have room to play with on both sides. And as long as I continue to do things that way, every time I see a property that fits this criteria and the seller is with it, I'm going to sell it, I'm going to make some money and it's going to be hard to lose. Finding what method works best for you is going to take trial and error, of course. But once you find it, stay with it, focus on it, refine it, make sure it fits you 100% and you would be successful in this business when it comes to making offers to sellers. I hope you found some value in this video. I hope I didn't talk too long. I hope you're not confused. If you are, reach out to me, helpwithwholesaling at gmail.com. I answer all questions. Reach out to me, I'm here. Comments under this video, whatever it is. I will do my best to help you because your success is important to me. Please believe that. Either way it goes, hope the value was there. Hope you found it. Until next time with my video where I talk about God knows what. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Stay successful. Peace.